Some of you may remember that about a year ago, Typekit joined Adobe and brought with it a world-class team with great experience building design and development services for developers and designers on the web. They also came with a great CEO who led that team and since joining Adobe has taken on an expanded responsibility not only continuing to manage Typekit, but also leading all of our efforts with the Creative Cloud. So to share the latest on Typekit and the great type solutions that we are helping to bring to the web, please join me in welcoming Adobe's Vice President of Creative Cloud, Jeff Veen. Thanks, Danny. Yeah, thank you. Hello, everybody. It is a pleasure here. And thank you, Danny, for that fantastic introduction. Um, I have a lot to share with you today, and I'm really excited about all of this stuff that we're doing with uh, Typekit, uh, the future of uh, typography and the web, and, and how it fits in with everything else at Adobe. Um, but before I do that, I want to kind of put things into a bit of context. Uh, because we've been spending a lot of time with the, with the demos that, that Kevin did and talked about and what Paul and Danny have been doing. Uh, we've been focused a lot on how remarkably complex web design and development has become and what we're trying to do to help with that. But I can, I'm happy to admit that I can remember a time when it wasn't very complex and in fact it looked a little bit like this. <laughs> Anybody else remember this? Oh, thank God. I thought, worried I'd be the oldest one here, so thank you. <laughs> uh, there was a time when we didn't have a multi-browser strategy, let alone a multi-device strategy, um, and uh, it's remarkable to think that this was nearly two decades ago, and in, the, in that amount of time, we fundamentally changed, frankly, the world uh, with the web. Part of the reason for the web's success was around the constraint that any piece of content could be displayed on any device. That meant a lot of constraint. We had no control at this time over the layout of our pages, over the colors that we could use, or uh, fonts and typography at all. Now that changed pretty quickly. Like the first thing that happened is Netscape gave us the font tag, right? Which gave us rudimentary control over uh, adding fonts to the page, but only rudimentary control. Uh, thankfully, we kind of moved beyond that into a more standards-based approach where we started using CSS and adding more to CSS to really start to get to some of the typographic control that designers had used in the past. So we could do things like weight and variant and, and line height to give the page a little more character. But the reality was the only fonts that you had uh, the ability to use were a very basic default set, something I think we're all incredibly familiar with now and sort of <laughs> exhausted by, right? And of course, if this wasn't enough, you could always right, spice things up a little bit with your favorite font on the sense. <laughs> Yeah, good. give it up for Comic Sans. <laughs> so, um, so that's kind of all we had, and we did some remarkable work with that, with pure sort of HTML, CSS design, and the standard fonts. We could do some cool stuff, um, but we knew, all of us, right, we knew deep down inside, like, look, there's thousands of fonts in the world, there's centuries of typographic tradition, and we're kind of ignoring all of that right now. So in 2008, the browser started to support, in a standards-based way, the ability to link a font on a server to a page that your users could download and view that font on the page, right? And, um, and it was sort of remarkable. Oh my gosh, we can do that now. People started experimenting with it, finding that the variety of browsers and mobile devices were beginning to support it, but in a you know, mostly incompatible way. And at the same time, the foundries, right, the companies that kind of have the world's fonts uh, uh, and maintain them and curate them and develop them, were looking at ways in which they could do uh, licensing for a whole new platform. And that's sort of where Typekit came in. In 2009, we launched Typekit as a platform for serving a collection of fonts, commercial, professional quality fonts, that tried to solve the browser and device compatibility issue for designers and developers and create a unified license so that you could buy a subscription and use the entire library and pick and choose based on your creativity and not on business model, which we found to be uh, uh, really sort of opened up the expressiveness of the web. And it has become incredibly expressive. So we have seen some amazing examples of what you can do just with fonts and CSS uh, to, in a native way in the browser, start to do these kinds of amazing designs. 
This is just purely CSS. All of this text is selectable and, high, and you can copy and paste and you can do all the things that you can do with text, including accessible devices and translations and all that sort of stuff. We've seen playful examples of really pushing what the browser is capable of doing with CSS. And it's just, it's wonderful to see just week after week new examples of this coming out. Companies have been uh, finally able to bring the typographic qualities of a brand natively into the browser, not have to rely on the most important words of their pages being trapped inside of an image or something like that. Great for searchability and, and, and that sort of stuff as well. Some of the biggest sites on the web have started to use Typekit as well. The New York Times was an early adopter. They're using it on a variety of the sections of their website, taking fonts that are hundreds of years old. With all of that rich tradition, translating them digitally and making them available to the web and powered by Typekit for the compatibility and serving for all that kind of stuff. The iconic fonts from many Condé Nast publications are now available on the web. We, we host the, the typography for the New Yorker and things like that. Uh, all of Martha Stewart uh, is using uh, Typekit as well now. It's just growing bigger and bigger. And obviously, publishers are a place where we would get started to bring typographic tradition into the browser. But also e-commerce websites and transactional websites and, and rich user interfaces. So the place where it's really important that the clarity of information matches not only the brand, but the kinds of tasks that people are trying to do. So we power typography on, on things like JetBlue or AOL Mail and things like that. And it has, I'm just, I've been humbled by the growth that we've seen, especially in this last year since we've been at Adobe. So right now, Typekit is powering the fonts on 1.5 million websites. And in the last 30 days alone, we've served up 8 billion page views for those websites. And you can see how the growth, not just of Typekit, but of web fonts in general, has been remarkable in just a really, really short amount of time. So it's really thrilling. The foundries that we work with um, have been fantastic. We now have over 1,200 font families available in the Typekit library, all included with a subscription that you get. There's uh, 53 foundries that we work with. Some of the best foundries, literally the best foundries in the world, are making their stuff available on Typekit, um, and it's really, really exciting. So Typekit growing like crazy. We're doing lots of deep infrastructure work to Typekit to maintain not just the amount of growth, but the speed flexibility of the networks behind it, so it's perfectly, uh, perfectly safe to trust Typekit to serve, <coughs> excuse me, the fonts on your website. <laughs> but part of the goal of Typekit has always been ubiquity. And not just ubiquity of us, but ubiquity of fonts on the web. We think it's better for the web, it's better for the platform of the web, just better all around. And that's why we've been working really closely with Google. Now, many of you are probably familiar with Google Web Font API. It's a set of open source typefaces that they make available to any website. But what you're not probably as familiar with is the fact that we've been working with Google for the last couple of years on a set of open source technologies behind the serving of the fonts. And that partnership uh, has been fantastic. And we've, d we've pushed further what, what the browsers are capable of and the tools that are available to designers and developers to help them build their sites and do fantastic typography. So I'm really excited to announce that we're moving even farther with Google and, and deepening that partnership and taking the expertise that Typekit has had in the serving and the quality of the typography of the web with the deep expertise Google has in the open source community, combining those together. And today, for the first time, I'm happy to announce that we're launching the Adobe Edge web font service. So let me tell you a little bit about what this is. We're taking 500 open source and free fonts that includes the library of Google Web Font API, plus a variety of free fonts from the Typekit library, as well as, for the first time, a collection of Adobe original fonts, making them completely free. You can use them however you like. You can put, just take the URLs. You don't need an account. They're not authenticated. Put them anywhere, in your markup, build your own tools, however you want to use those, you can. We believe this will create just a, a tremendous growth in web fonts across the world. These fonts are going to continue to develop. Both technically, we're doing a tremendous amount of upgrades and improvements to all of these fonts. We're hand hinting some of the display faces to look as good as they can, both in the, the simplest devices that, that uh, support web fonts all the way up to retina displays and beyond. 
right? We're also curating the overall library, searching out and seeking the best typefaces that we can add free to the library. And we're integrating them all into a variety of, uh, of Adobe products. All of this is going to be served by that global infrastructure that's already serving all of those 1.5 million websites. So based on the Typekit uh, technology, all of these free fonts are available. So let me give you a little look at what it's going to what it's going to look like is Adobe Edge Web Fonts. It's, going to be, it's available right now on html.adobe.com. You can go there and you can start using this immediately. And we talk about some of the services that are available here, but then get down to how you actually use it. Now, we've got a variety of documentation available for how you can build the URLs. You can do it programmatically. It's really deep down a developer service that we're making available. Right? So you, all the hand coding that you normally do, you can, uh, you can put all of this stuff right in there. Uh, we also made this little preview right here so that you can sort of, you know, zip around and, and check out some of the fonts if you want. You can just kind of switch them over and you can type here and, and see the fonts, and that's all very nice. Uh, as you do that, you can just grab this text right here, copy it, paste it into your markup, and start using the fonts. It's literally that simple. We thought we could probably, though, make it even simpler. Uh, and so we've done some uh, integrations into things like Reflow, uh, and some other ones, and you'll see demos of that uh, in just a minute. So very, very simple to use um, and available immediately. No accounts needed, completely free. So I encourage you to go check that out. Now, the other thing that uh, I had mentioned earlier is that we're including a whole bunch of fonts, and I have a couple of announcements around that too. We've taken a bunch of fonts from the Adobe Original Library, made them available as well, as well as two new fonts, uh, two new fonts that I think kind of represent a big step forward uh, and a milestone in type design and development at Adobe. Now, we've got a few decades of type design experience in our past. In fact, fonts and display of fonts is sort of at the very core of what Adobe started as a company all those years ago. And for the first time now, we've done uh, a release of a new typeface that's completely open source. It's called Source Sans Pro. We launched this about a week and a half ago. Uh, and it's available uh, you know, via our uh, GitHub repository and things like that. This font is designed specifically to be embedded in open source projects. Now, um, you, can, you can include it in any open source software that you're building, web frameworks that you might be creating, themes, or anything like that. If it's open source, you can put Source Sans in there. And Source Sans Pro is designed from the beginning to be incredibly legible on a wide variety of uh, displays and resolutions and things like that, specifically for user interface work. So it looks great in menus, dialog boxes, navigation systems, and things like that. Today, we're launching a new font along with this. In addition to Source Sans now, we've expanded the family to include not just Source Sans, but a new font called Source Code Pro. Ooh, yes, let me show it to you. Source Code Pro, again, completely open source, totally free, and designed as a monospaced font specifically for hand coding, doing markup, and writing all of your code. Now you can see some examples in the font. and get a little geeky here with our, with our typography. For example, the capital I, the lowercase l, and the number one are all different. <laughs> So you guys spend a little time in text editors, I'm guessing. <laughs> That's actually pretty rare in a font, right? If you're crafting a family and you want it to sort of, you know, have a, have a sort of unified look, those, those characters typically are pretty similar. Uh, just like, here's another example, the uppercase O and the zero, right? Now, when you're, hand, when you're coding, when you're writing markup or developing uh, code, the difference between a lowercase l and a one is the difference between validating or throwing an error, right? And, and, and the constant sort of looking back, like, why do I have an error? Why do I have an error? Oh, it shouldn't be the typeface, right, that's causing the error. And we believe that we've made one of the most legible open source monospace fonts that's ever existed. Starting today, you can use it in all the work that you do. Again, available at our GitHub repository um, and get started. Now, both of these fonts, are going to be available also via the uh, Adobe Edge web font service and the Google 
uh, web font API. So you can start to use them in any projects that you're using or any web designs. So really great stuff, and I encourage you to check them both out. So yeah, Typekit uh, continues to grow as the source of commercial, professional quality web fonts. And now the Adobe Edge web fonts service can join that as a place for the best open source, highest quality free fonts in the world. We're really excited about that. But there's one other little thing that I wanted to talk about. And that was that since the very beginning of Typekit, we knew that two things would be important. One would be the quality of the service and the quality of the fonts in there. And we've worked really hard at that. But just as important would be to take that level of quality and provide the quantity of fonts. And we knew that variety was absolutely critical. And so we've been growing the Typekit library week after week after week. As I've shown you, we have over 1,200 fonts now available in the library. But we knew that there were just thousands more fonts that were available in the world, and that those should be part of our platform as well. And in particular, there is a tremendous library of both historically important and contemporary, beautifully created fonts that we wanted to get into Typekit. And I'm so excited to announce that we've signed a partnership now with Monotype. Thanks. Now, those of you that follow a little bit of the world of typography know that Monotype has one of the most amazing libraries of fonts in the world. They've got their Monotype library. They've got the Linotype library. They've got ITC fonts. Uh, they've got the Bitstream fonts. We're incredibly excited to announce that we'll be taking 1,000 of the best fonts, making them available in Typekit. These are some really important fonts that have never before been available via Typekit. We're also taking a bunch of Adobe's fonts, making them available via Monotype services as well. So choice is there, and it's fantastic. This is really going to push the web forward as well. And we believe with these two announcements, the Adobe Web Font Service, the Edge Web Font Service, and Monotype and Typekit, that there's really no reason whatsoever to not choose web fonts when you start any project now, no matter what that project is. And we hope you do, too, because like I said, we believe that web fonts are a fundamental component of making the web more legible, more usable, more accessible, and ultimately, with all of us working together, more beautiful. So thank you very much. <laughs>